everybody. So today I wanted to do just like a really simple grilled salad so we can kind of talk about all the beautiful produce and all these beautiful oils and cheeses and all the wonderful stuff here at Peach Road Farmer's Market. We're going to keep it real loose. Please interrupt with questions. Those are my favorite things. So what we're doing is we've got our egg up to about 500 degrees. We're going to just going to cut our lemon and pop some seeds out. We can do it now or later, but it's so much easier just to pop them out before we grill them. Yeah. Hmm? 500. 500, 400. <laughs> Whatever, 100. Something 100. Now we're just going to put them face down on here on the hard, hottest part. I found some rosemary back here, and we're going to use that to kind of get a little bit of rosemary smoke into what we're doing. All those good oils. So while our lemons are charring, we're going to put some of this uh, beautiful baby bok choy from Serenby Farms right over here. This stuff is so good and tender, and it'll pick up all that good smoke. I do a lot of work with Big Green Egg, and they're just fun. This guy is a little one that I always keep in my truck to travel with, and they're just fun to use. So we're charring our lemon. We're getting our bok choy nice and smoky. We're going to cut up some of these beautiful radishes from Heritage Farm over here. And we're going to add some sunflower oil and some feta. But again, this is my favorite thing to do in demos, just to go around and be like, what do you guys got? What do you want to move? What do you got over here? And just throw it on the grill and have fun with it. So, I mean, this could be grilled romaine. Look how pretty that is. It's like an art project. So we're slicing these nice and thin. And it's really cool. Uh, with Pine Street, we've been here at the market since 2009, and it's really neat to see how far it's grown and all the different wonderful producers and all this fun stuff. Yeah, I'm going to pass them around. Let's pass around some radishes. Heck yeah. Do we got a plate? Everyone can try it. These are really pretty. But again, we're just taking just some, some wonderful produce. And my whole philosophy is keep it nice and simple. Otherwise, you guys aren't going to make it at home. If it has like 115 steps, you'll be like, that was an interesting demonstration, but I'm not going to make it. So we've got our bok choy grilling. Oh, this is really pretty. So we're getting a good char in our lemon, but we're going to let it keep burning, and it'll caramelize it and pull out the natural sugars for our vinaigrette. So you see we're getting some good color on our bok choy. Look at that. That's cool. Get some good color on there. We're going to take some of the feta cheese and crumble it. And this is from Mary at Decimal Place. Wonderful cheese. So this is a, a good side that, um, I don't know about you guys, but when you fire up your grill, you get it really, really hot, cook stuff, and then it's still really, really hot, and you don't know what to do. So you just throw some lettuce on there. The peaches would be really good on there, too. Should we pass some feta cheese around? Heck yeah. We're just going to keep passing stuff around. Here. Cut them in half and cut side down and take the pit out. But it's always because you've got so much residual heat on these things, especially like in the summer, and they're going to stay a little bit hotter longer. You've got to use that residual heat, otherwise you're just wasting charcoal. So we're crumbling up our feta cheese, and we're going to build a vinaigrette around it. We're going to use this really good sunflower oil from Oliver Farm. We're just going to keep this nice and simple. See how these guys are starting to wilt and they've got that good smokiness? So we're going to take them off and add some more. Look at that. We're getting good color.
So we've got our radishes, we've got our bok choy, we've got our lemons charring. Let me cut up some more radishes. Does anybody have any questions about summertime grilling? It's got to be one question. So I do a lot of work with Big Green Egg, and um, I, they take me around, and we get to do fun classes, and <laughs> teach at Pine Street Market, and teach at the Big Green Egg Culinary Center. And there's a lot of fun to work with. So we're cutting the ends off of our bok choy, and then we're just gonna rough chop it into our salad, keeping the leaves nice and whole. And our lemons are charring, so we've got a good little bit of color, and they're nice and smoky. So we're going to squeeze some lemon juice in here. Throw away our seeds. We've got our lettuce charring, or our bok choy. Ooh, good. I like to just lightly wilt it so it gets that good smoke and then chop it in. But again, you could do this with almost any lettuce that's like a little bit hearty, like romaine or even uh, arugula or tender kale. <laughs> Dun, da, da, da. And so that little bit of heat from the bok choy is going to melt that feta. And then just for fun, we're going to chop in some thyme. Who did we get the thyme from? From McMillan Farms, the thyme came from. And the thyme just helps brighten it up a little. Dun, dun, dun. And salt and pepper. Anybody have any questions about big green egg or grilling or vegetables or just life? We're all a happy family here. Life. Mm, that's good. Um. I don't know. But we can go over and ask them. Will you grab the guy from Heritage Farm to come talk about radishes? Yep. Let's get him over here and ask him. If we don't know an answer, we'll find one. Yeah. So we're going to keep putting these on here just to get a little bit of smoke on them. And that good color on the lemon. And this also just looks really pretty on the plate. If you just put that on the plate with your salad. Look at that. Oh my gosh, yeah. Gr cauliflower takes on so much smoke. That's one of my favorite vegetables. Um, I would cut it in half, just like we did with the, the lemon, and then just put it on there and get a good char. That would be really good. It'd soak up a bunch of flavor. Okay. Well, let's cut into all these and see what they look like. Oh my gosh. That's the watermelon radish. That's really cool. They're really pretty. Yeah. So we'll add a little bit in here. But again, this is just a fun, fun way to use up some of your, the produce you can get here at the market and just have a good fun side. But that heat, that little bit of heat from the bok choy is melting our feta and making it really nice and gooey. We'll chop some more of it in there. So we're leaving the leaves really, really big and then taking the stem and cutting them down. You don't want big stems in there because it's going to be too much to chew on. So leave the leaves large, like what would fit perfectly on a fork, and then go nice and tight through the stem. We want to serve some? Yeah, why not? So again, this is just a nice, fun little side dish. Just nice and gooey. 
Will you taste it? A fork right there. Oh, wow. Oh, good. I approve. Does anybody have any questions? This is my favorite thing in the whole world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one's only $600, which sounds like a lot, but I mean, we use it at the shop almost every day. And it's still, it's in great shape. I always like whenever I do a demo with these things, it's too obvious to like grill a steak or do barbecue. You want to show off all the different stuff it can do. Um, I was just up in Nantucket for the Nantucket Wine Festival and was showing people how to cold smoke on it. So we were cold smoking salmon and brie cheese. I roasted a piglet on one of them. It was fun. Hmm? We're in Avondale Estates over near Agnes Scott College. Mm -hmm. Smoke the salmon? <laughs> cold smoked salmon is really, really easy. Um, two parts by volume, two parts brown sugar to one part salt. Uh -huh. Then you put your piece of salmon in a Ziploc bag. It doesn't have to be name brand, make any zipper bag. With that cure, just enough to cover it. Let it sit in there for about, for about two days. Then take it off and rinse it, and then cold smoke it. So even it would be Gravlox if you didn't cold smoke it. So after two days, you can go ahead and slice it. It's very easy. So what I do to cold smoke is I put a little bit of um, little bit of white. What? Oh, I'll get louder. When I cold smoke, um, a little bit of uh, burning hot coals in the bottom of the egg, some rosemary or some wood chips or pecan shells, and then a tray of uh, salted ice, okay. and then a little thing on top where you put like a little uh, cooling rack for bakery, baking, and then the product on top of that. Uh oh, controversial fighting. Yeah. What do we think? It's just that feta is so good. All these products are so good. It's fun to do a demo with one, two, three, four, five, six ingredients. So it doesn't have to be complicated. You can grill something, have fun. The other fun thing about this is you get to play with your grill. Like if you put a steak on, you gotta leave it for a little while, but with this you gotta just play around with it. Yeah. The big green egg lump charcoal is my favorite because it's so big. It's these big giant pieces. Yeah, so the, like the ones you get at the grocery store or Ace are a lot smaller, and these guys by being so big get really good airflow around the coals. And so they can get a lot hotter. I can get this thing up to 700, or I can cold smoke at 70 degrees. Yes, that's the best one. Big green egg charcoal. They have it at Ace Hardware. Yeah, they're fun. I would, I never, ever, 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 ever use hickory or mesquite because they taste like Marlboro cigarettes and gasoline. And I never want my food to taste like Marlboro cigarettes and gasoline. Cherry tastes like cough syrup. I use apple and a little bit of pecan, maybe one pecan shell. Because when you, when you crack open your pecans, don't throw away the shells. Those are for grilling. We don't throw stuff away. Yeah. Um, and then apple, white oak is really good if you want a stronger smoke. But those are really the only three that I use. But then like rosemary stems, thyme, the thyme would be good in here too. But the best is, I mean, also just go get some wood and, and play, play around with it, yay! That scared me. Yeah? Thanks. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's the most fun about cooking. It's just playing around with it and see what happens. If anybody, while the grill's still hot, if anybody wants to go grab something from a booth, we can grill it. <laughs> it's going to be hot for like an hour. So we got an hour to play with it. Yeah. She, yeah, she does. We made a lot this week. I hate running out. Well, sometimes to create the, the demand and scare people, we'll run out. Because then they're like, no, there's like a panic, and you're like, I'll take five pounds. Can I ask you something about your bacon? Yes. Yeah? Where does the sweet come from? And, and Molasses and maple. Okay. Is there a variety of bacon that you make that we have the sweetness to it? No. We make a thousand pounds of that a week, okay. and we can't get enough humane belly, so that's why we run out. Because we could buy commodity, but then it's like, that's gross. You can taste the tears in the commodity bacon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll have it Saturday. We're gonna, well, it'll be ready on Thursday, but we'll have it here next Saturday. Thanks. I'm glad you like it. I want it to be like the last bite of breakfast. Like when you're at the diner and you kind of swirl your pancake through. So it's got country sausage bacon and the dancing goat. We're supposed to say Fat Dwarf and Bronson. You're not supposed to say dancing goat. Coffee. And so it's like that, that last bite of breakfast. Yeah. Oops. Clean knife. Other questions. These questions are fun. <laughs> go go grab some stuff to grill. Yeah. Is what? That they're wrong. <laughs> but it's it's not. I mean, you can. Right. You can over you can over smoke something. You can over salt something. You can over cure something and hurt yourself. Um, but a little bit of smoke is just adding flavor. I mean, if you, if you were to char a steak and cook it for like three or four hours, then eat it, it'd probably be bad for your body. But that little bit of smoke is bringing, is caramelizing the natural sugars. I mean, bad in comparison to what? Deep frying, you know, or sauteing with too much unhealthy oil. I think it's the, it's the, the most true way to cook, and it's, it's the healthiest way to cook. Did that make sense? Well, it's, it's the additives and the preservatives that go into smoked food that are, are bad for us. It's not the, just the truest form of smoking. Look at that. That looks like a photo. They, we have, or they, I'm sorry, I'm still in Big Green Egg mode. They have um, seven different sizes. This is the Mini Max. It's portable. Um, there's a small one that's a little bit smaller that's too small. I mean, that's a, the small one? It's for people that live alone. Yeah. This is for people that have friends. And now we have the extra large at the shop, but that's like for a family of 10. And there's the 2XL for people that have too much money. So you want a large, larger mini max is what, what you want. And if you go to if you go to the Big Green Egg Culinary Center or the Big Green Egg Shop, and name drop me, they we might be able to get you a discount. Yep, it can't hurt. This is the Mini Max, which is my favorite. I'm just gonna keep playing with food until they tell me to leave. Even go grab something from the booth, and we'll grill some meat if you guys want to. Crumbled cheese. I love Mary's cheeses. Are we still recording? Yeah. What do you guys think? It was good. Good, good, good. Yeah. It's good for you. He's slow. Well, taste it. Yeah, well, try it. Try it. Yes, I'm all. I don't like being called sir. It makes me <laughs> makes me remember I'm old. Oh goodness, no. How are we doing? All right, 
Are we still recording? What do you think? Use that for fish or yeah. salad? It's sweeter. It's taking out a lot Heck of the yeah. Heck yeah. Right. And so by caramelizing it like that, you can even, on your, um, your gas burner inside, like if it's bad weather, you can just char it on there yeah, as well. But any citrus reacts really, really well to the smoke. Thanks. We're still going? Ah, oh, we're still going. I'm still on. No curse words. <laughs> no, I meant for me, because I'm mic'd. Yeah, it, it won't pick up your curse words. Throw out all your favorites. Just shoot some out. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? Asparagus is really good on there. With the grilled lemon, that would be really good too. And some banner butter. Yeah. Oh. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't grill it very long. Grill it kind of like this so it still has that good crunch. Oh, of course. Oh, I saw so food in it. No, it won't. More questions. Yes. Uh huh. How long do you keep it on there? It's kind of like you're putting ice. You're putting just a little bit of white hot coals in your wood chips, and then a container of ice and salt, and that salt will. No, uh, it can. I would just put like a little disposable pan, and then in there the salt and the ice, and the salt's going to keep that ice super super cold. And then one, like a wire cooling rack, like when you make cookies, okay, on top of that, right. and then your product. Okay. Two hours is ideal, but even a 30 minutes to an hour is going to add a lot of smoke. Okay. Yeah. So it just stays, stays right about 70 degrees. 70 degrees. Yeah. Okay. And by curing the salmon for a couple of days in your fridge, it's, it's already safe to eat. And that was one, part one part kosher salt, two parts dark brown sugar, and that's it. You can add, sometimes I'll add some uh, orange zest. Orange and salmon play really well together. Um, like a pastrami rub, barbecue rub, just make it your own. Have fun with it. Yeah. Cool. Some fresh herbs. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to put it in a Ziploc bag and our casserole dish and cure it for two days. Just kind of mound that stuff up on the, um, the sugar and salt up on it for two days. Kind of shake it around a little bit to, to make sure it gets in there, you know, every, every day or so. You can go three days if you want, but it tends to be a little bit drier. But, um, in two days, you want to rinse it off, and then you can either serve it as grovlocks right away or cold cheese.